I'm going to show you how to remove all the interior from your RX-7 FC. Now I tried to be as efficient as possible with this as to not have an hour long video. So before you start, let's make sure you have some type of trim remover tools. These cars are old, the plastic's brittle, and this will help greatly in reducing breakage. So let's get started. First, we want to remove the seats. There's two bolts in the front, there's two bolts in the back. Some of them are hidden under some carpet. Pretty easy to remove. Get those bad boys out of the way, and we can start moving on to the rear seats that I have. A lot of them don't, but I do. You just start by pushing it in and up, and then you can pull them right out, and then just kind of get those seat belts out of there. For the rear seats, there's two bolts on each side, as you can see. Get rid of those, and then you just got to release it from the locking mechanisms up top, and you can slide that bad boy out of there. Next, we want to remove everything that's very easily seen and easy to remove, like the center console, just those four screws, the seat belts, you can easily remove them with a wrench or a power tool, and the door sills, just a bunch of screws. You can easily see all these things, they're pretty easy to remove. Next, we're going to remove the speaker covers. You can see all the spots where the screws go, except for where there's rear seats. you got to stick a screwdriver in there. Be careful not to strip any of the screws. Here's another angle of it. I think it's better to approach it when you can actually see this, the screw in there. Otherwise, it can, for some reason, it's kind of tough. But I have faith in you. Now the rear trunk plastic trim, once we have the speaker covers gone, you can get a screwdriver right in there and you can get that one right there. And then there'll be another one right next to the trunk hatch latch that I don't really film it because mine was broken, but then you can just kind of pull it right out. Okay, here we start getting to some fun plastic interior pieces. Let's remove that one screw that you just saw and then you can start pulling up on this just be careful this is where things can get brittle and delicate use the tool if you have it i didn't yet have it here for some reason so i went out with my hand and i somehow didn't break any of the pieces and i'm really grateful for that but you want to find where it connects directly to the body of the car and pull from there look at that that was a perfect score here it is another side too now if you pull at it away from where it snaps into the car, that's when things are going to break. You want to reach your hand in there or the tool and get directly where it snaps into the body of the car and pull up from there. That's your best shot of not breaking any tabs. Once the plastic's gone, you can remove the wheel well carpet. There's going to be a bunch of plastic tabs that you can pull up on with your hands or with the interior trim removal tool. Next up, the holy grail of interior plastics, the A and B pillars. If it's cold out or you're worried about the condition of your trim pieces, then I highly suggest using a heat gun on a low to medium setting. First, we want to remove this metal headliner piece. There's going to be a screw on the left and the right side of both the front and the back. The back came off pretty easily for me, uh, but the front, I had to use the tool to kind of snap the pieces out. I'm sure it's going to vary from car to car. There's the front. Uh, now, here we get to the A pillars. Now, definitely use a tool. And like I said before, pull at it where it snaps into the body of the car. Take your time and hopefully you don't break too many pieces. Uh, there's five spots where it bolts to the car or snaps to the car. I, um, I only broke one piece on each side. And I think I can repair it with uh, some JB plastic weld. I'm hoping. Well, let's see it come out. Boom. Look at that. There she is. B pillars. Remove the two screws on the bottom, like shown. Make sure you have that seat belt up top already removed. And then there's going to be like a coat hanger kind of hook up top that you'll see in a second. You can just remove that with the screwdriver as well. You'll also need to remove the shock for the hatch, but make sure you have something propping it up or you're gonna have what happened to me. Here's a little slow of it. If something was delicate right there, somebody was right there, it could probably hurt them. Anyways, plastic trim removal, same process. Find where it's snapped into the car and pull from there 
and you should be able to get this one off pretty easily. It's easier than the A pillar. Um, and luckily I don't think I broke any of my tabs on either side of this one. Um, so kudos to me. But then you're gonna have an electrical connector that's kind of a pain in the ass to, uh, to remove for some reason. And you can't really pull it out. Let's, we'll see it here in a second. So check this out. We got this bad boy out. Look at all those tabs. And then there's that electrical connector. It took us, I think, five-ish minutes or so just to get it out. Um, but you'll get it. I have faith in you. And then just pull it through and you can, you can get these out of the way. Next up is everything for the headliner. First, we want to remove the rear view mirror. There's that little plastic piece right there. You kind of just pull at it, and there's two screws that you can see. And then that front, that big piece of, yeah, that little light cover, and you got some screws right there as well. Just start unscrewing, and then you're going to have some electrical connectors that you pull apart, and you can get that thing out of the way. Obviously, you guys got to remove the sun visors. There's three screws for it. My footage for it came out bad, so I didn't include it, but I have faith that you guys can figure out how to remove those without me. Okay, and then here we'll see it's kind of dropped down, and then there's those clips you got to undo. There's one, there's two, just pull those, and then the other two are clips that you're going to actually like have to press in and pull. And always remember, don't pull them by the wires. That's risky business. Pull them by the clips, like the, the little, little buttons. And look, she comes right off. The headliner has like these little screw tabs. So just remove them from all the sides. Uh, oh yeah, we need to make sure that we remove that. And when you put an Allen wrench in here, you can manually move the sunroof. And you want to get it about, where, see where I have it, about a third of the way. That's what I was suggested to do. I'm not entirely sure why, but that's how much you need to have it in order to remove everything. You don't need to remove those, those metal taps, and, and you probably shouldn't because you don't want to lose them. So try and keep them all together. But once you have all those plastic tabs off, that thing will pretty much just kind of fall out. Ooh, and now we're on to the dash. So remove uh, the glove department. There's just screws right there in the bottom and then some screws in the top. Uh, yeah, so two screws on the top, and then you'll be able to pull out the box, and then there's going to be a light that you need to, like, twist and pull to get out. Just like so. You can kind of see it. Just remove the three screws in the back for the steering wheel. Every steering wheel is different, um, but mine has three screws in the back, and then there's a clip for the horn. And then I think it was a 21 millimeter size uh, nut. Uh, and then you can pull the wheel off. And then for the cluster bezel, there's going to be those three screws that you see me doing right here. And then there's going to be two screws on the bottom. Uh, mine was missing one of them, so you only see me do one. Now, we, it's a very delicate thing. All of those turn signal switches, super delicate. I had to fix mine with a plastic JB weld, but every time you remove it is going to be risky. Mine are kind of, one of them, mine's like a little shaky, but you want to be really careful with these because it's all that stuff's really expensive parts. So just take your time. This is one of those things that's really delicate. Next, remove the four screws, two on each side to remove the gauge cluster. And then go to the engine bay and push the, the speedometer cable in. That way you can get more room inside the cabin to unclip the speedometer cable and then also you'll see a black and a white um, plastic they're not clips but they kind of slide on and when you put them back on make sure that all the metal tabs match the plastic tabs you'll, you'll notice there's like missing spots make sure they line up next we can remove the shifter uh, and the bezels first just twist off that shift knob and the shifter bezel just is on by some clips that are, they come off really easy, so not a big problem. 
Same with the, the radio surround, comes off pretty easily. S4s are harder plastic, so they do tend to break, which is why I went and got an S5 one. It's rubber and not as delicate, so always a fun little mod to do. We're going to go ahead and remove the cigarette lighter and the ashtray, get those out of the way. And then you should be able to just pull your bezel out, um, depending on how heavy the tabs are. But it should come out pretty easily. Mine definitely does. It's almost too easy. I have the aftermark gauges. Uh, you'll probably have a radio, but it's going to be the same principle as removing the climate control unit. It's just going to have some screws on it, and you're just going to undo all those screws. You're going to pull out the unit, and then there'll be some some uh, electrical connectors undo those so you got four screws right here two on each side you'll pull the sucker out you're gonna have two electrical tabs in the back that you're gonna remove and then you're gonna have one that's all the way basically in the very front of the car right by the windshield where the windshield needs to dash right there right that white plastic tab you once you get rid of this metal grill right here at the front as you see i'm removing with the trim tool you'll be able to reach your hand in there and pull it out. It's kind of a pain to pull out, and it's even more of a pain to get it back in there and to clip it in. Next, we're gonna move on to removing the dummy lights. Just two screws once you remove that plastic piece. They often break. I don't have one, so I don't have to worry about it, but they do often break removing them. Uh, then there's an electrical connector behind it. Just undo that sucker, and then you're free to go on this part. Back to the shifter, you remove the four bolts that hold onto the rubber, lift it up, and you can remove the three bolts that hold on to the actual shifter, and then you can pull it out. Okay, and for the dash, we're gonna have three bolts on the upper part between the lower windshield. There's one on the right, there's a center one, and then you'll see me do the left one. And next, we're gonna have two bolts on each side near the door vents. They're kind of pointing towards the engine bay, kind of pointing them out right there. I am unscrewing those. I can't remember if I need to do them or not. You can kind of tell once you're there, but got a little power tool with an extension, get both of them out on that side, and then the two out on the other side. Then there's gonna be two screws on the center vents right here. And then you're gonna have one screw on each side that's gonna be for the side vents. You also need to make sure you get this, rid of this little plastic piece underneath uh, the steering column. But here's one screw. You kinda gotta reach back there and point it towards yourself. It's, this one's kinda tricky, but I have faith in you once again. Now everything should be good to pull the dash out. So get all the wires, push it back there. You have a clear space to pull out the dash. If you got a buddy to help you, that's great. It's gonna make things easier. The the, um, the e-brake will kind of get in the way. You kind of got to work around that. Kind of pull it up, pull it down, do what you got to do. Uh, before you fully pull it out, just look back there. Make sure there's nothing still hanging. Nothing's got missed. You don't want to break anything. But that should be everything. And the dash will be able to get... No, so he's getting the last, that other side uh, vent that I forgot about. Because there's one on each side. See, that's why you got to take your time. You don't want to break anything. Those plastics on the dashes are pretty delicate. I'm going to try and repair some of mine because mine were already broken from the previous owner, and then I did break mine a little more just removing it on this time. But I think I can do it. And now we can move on to the carpet. Yes. So get rid of all that seatbelt stuff and get rid of all those little plastic tabs. Now here's where I have to apologize. I was not able to fully remove the carpet. You can see it's on there really snug and trying to remove that blower unit in the center, I, I, I did not have the time to completely remove it. I had to get everything back together and drive my car out of this before the sun went down, which I wasn't even able to successfully do. So I had to cut my carpet and I tried to do it in the most discreetly placed places as possible, but you know, you won't be able to see as all the plastics on, so I think I'm gonna be okay. From what I found online, most people do this. Unless you're like parting out the whole car, it seems, and they're taking everything apart, it seems that most people will just cut it. 
I don't know if you taking out that blower is going to affect any AC lines or coolant lines. That's if you if you know for sure in the comments, please please write it and let me know and let everyone else know. But in the meantime, I just cut around it and I was able to finally get it out because I was tugging at it for I don't know a good thirty minutes. I was doing research for a good thirty minutes and I was just like I don't have time to to. Uh, to try and figure this out right now. I got to get this thing back together and drive this thing out of here. So, you know, you can kind of see me pulling the carpet out and damn, it feels good once you get it out. I tell you what, because this whole process was about, I think at least five hours of what I got done, removing everything. And yeah, I was doing some filming and, and chit chatting when we got lunch, but it's, it's, it's definitely going to take you a few hours for sure. So I hope this helped. I tried to be quick about it. I, I'm sorry. I didn't always get the best angle. I, I tried to just, you know, put the headset on my head and, and went to town. I knew it was going to take a while. But uh, next is I'm going to dye all this interior. So subscribe. And uh, hopefully that will be up in about a month. So stay tuned. Thanks, folks. Bye.